So this is one of those rare, difficult films to review, not because there's really anything um, difficult about reviewing it. It is what it is. It's one of the worst films of all time. That is no exaggeration. Probably the worst film of the last decade or this decade because it was supposed to come out in 2019. So technically it's the worst film perhaps of that decade, though I'm sure it's got competition. But in terms of the new decade... Um, yeah, it's probably going to be easily top five. It's not going to miss the top ten. This is definitely going to be one of the worst films of the year. And it has the bad luck that there probably aren't going to be that many films that are going to be released because of the current crisis. So it's going to be much harder to hide. What's puzzling me is that with all the hatred that Cats is getting, sort of, you know, just a lot of people are now going to... And I'm going to include myself. I, I do want to do something on Cats. But I guess with Cats, people have like this like, feeling of hatred because of what it could have been and the talent wasted and etc., etc. But when we think about it objectively, Doolittle is a far, far worse film. But people don't really hate it. They're just more shrugging their shoulders. And it was just like, oh, this is just... This is bad. It is bad. It's depressingly terrible. But it doesn't make you angry. It just feels like, oh... The, what was the point of this thing aside aside from money i mean it just seems like why is robert downey even trying to do this but it's sad because he did have a reason behind it he just wanted to play a really obscure eccentric character and bring it to life um but at the most crude analysis this is basically a kind of role that robin williams would have done in the 1990s and probably doing an okay job with it but it's not that he's not as talented as robin it's just it just feels like too much of a con job. I mean, this is produced by his production company, and it's clearly meant to be just a commercial project. And again, I don't think they had any bad intentions. I think they just wanted to make, you know, an okay kids film and start off a franchise. But there's really no plot or character or great special effects. There's really nothing pushing this. The narrative is just pretty much a complete joke. I mean... Okay, let me just go through it. Um, very quickly, he's a doctor who's depressed. He lost his wife. He befriends a small kid, Tommy. Um, the queen is sick. He goes to see the queen and he's gets out of his depression. And him and Tommy go on an adventure to find a cure for the queen. That's the film in a nutshell. And I guess it's really what you're supposed to enjoy is him and all this witty repartee between him and the animals. But the animals are all fake and the CGI is... It's not bad CGI, it's just kind of just barely competent CGI. The one good CGI thing in it was the dragon, but he's just a setup for a bunch of crude jokes, so you don't really enjoy the dragon too much, really. So, even when the CGI is at its best, it's not breathtaking, it's not groundbreaking, it's not, you know, it's not like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It's nothing like, oh, at least this is a moment in time of animation or slow motion or mocap or some other special effect. It's just, it's very lazy, it's just, he just you know, works with the CGI animals, and, you know, it's an impressive list of people who are doing the voices, but, um, the jokes aren't funny, the plot is uninspired, motivations are murky, um, talented is wasted, it's just, it's a very prototypical, bad, big budget film that it seems to be a, just a marketing plan that just went badly wrong, and just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and more and more and more boring and more and more boring and it's and it's not even that long it's it's barely two hours but yet you feel it you feel it I mean I will say this the beginning of it is actually pretty good it has a very small animated section and I thought oh this is really this is really interesting and for that alone it is worth seeing um but after that little moment, and it's a really interesting segment where you do get introduced to the animals in the house. He has all this kind of like very Victorian technology that, you know, runs the house. Like it's a modern cybernetic household. That was interesting. But when the actual quote film begins with the plot and narrative, it's just, it's just silly. And it's just too dumb and dull and the jokes are too crude. And it's unclear who the audience is because even kids will be like, this is just too stupid and silly. And adults are going to barely be able to take any of this seriously. And it just feels like, why this character? Why this franchise? I mean, it just seems like they just looked over what they had. And they're like, oh, Eddie Murphy made some money from this. So, okay, it's our turn. And there you go. That said, I don't, 
I don't hate this film. I don't think you can really watch this film and actively hate it. I mean, it's not like Pan. Like, Pan is something that is actively evil and has really bad intentions, really bad politics, really bad storytelling. It's just, it's a travesty. And this isn't that. This is just, you know, Robert wanting to just do a good film for kids and hopefully adults will enjoy it. It's a nice easy paycheck and people will like it and they'll just do a couple more sequels and celebrities will do the voices. Everyone's going to make money and everyone will enjoy themselves. And clearly from the behind the scenes, he seemed to like doing the character, but it's really, really sad because there just isn't any creative voice here or vision. It's just the cutting and editing, what there is of it, makes no sense. I mean, the plot just moves in all these kinds of weird directions. You can tell it's been rewritten and reshot. And this is from the director of Syriana. And clearly he's doing what he can, but even what he did, they had to take it away from him and give it to somebody else. So the reshooting, it makes no sense. It doesn't add anything. It's been pushed up pushed back several times it was uh, supposed to come out early 2019 then late 2019 and then they had to push it again to avoid rise of skywalker and i would have to say as much as i am not impressed by rise of skywalker i was never actively bored i do think rise of skywalker is just sort of like this honorable failure and this is sort of a little bit below that it's not it's not trash it's not evil it's not trying to make you angry it's just it just fails. It fails to be funny, fails to be interesting, fails to be enjoyable, fails to care. You don't really care about the animals. You don't care about the characters. You're like, okay, uh, for what it is, I guess it's, you know, it could have been worse, but it's just basically a really bad marketing plan turned into a film that just was never really salvaged in the editing. And the amount of money made uh, it was made for is just astonishing. It's just, why would they spend so much and it kind of reminds me of all these old Ebert reviews by Roger Ebert in the 1990s about the worst films of all time. And yet, you know, I can kind of at least see why somebody would like some of these things, like like when he was railing on the Spice Girls. But I'm like, well, I can kind of see why this would be important for British culture or history, them trying to do a kind of Beatles movie. But that's not this film. There's really nothing redemptive about it. There's nothing interesting in terms of cultural history or the history of animation or... Robert Downey Jr. performances. He just does an okay performance in a below average film. So really the only reason I recommend looking at this is watch the YouTube clips and try to enjoy them. But if you're going to pay for it in terms of rentals, please don't laugh at Robert Downey Jr. I'm sure he did this for all the right reasons, but yeah, it's really not good. It's really only for curiosity's sake. You'd want to really look at it and just be like bask at the sheer terrible nature of the whole thing. It's just... I, you know, it's just astonishingly stupid and bad. It's just like, how did this thing get made? It's the only really the interesting thing to talk about is how this thing was produced, but the actual product is itself just, it's really not worth talking about. So that's Doolittle, one of the worst of the decade. There you are, pop cult analysis on one of the worst films of the uh, decade, or the last two decades, technically. All right, Pop Cult Analyzed, uh, be safe. If you like the content, please hit the like button and or subscribe. Thank you for listening. Please be safe.